possibly fire up the Celine 89-421. This car doesn't have its scooter harness anymore because we're on a Terminator X. So we're more than good for the factory initial power up. So let's see. Oh, look at that. We are alive. Now to get that thing fired up, huh? Yeah, see if everything's looking good. And if so, maybe bump that key. What's up guys, welcome back to the Infamous Project. We are counting down almost minutes to be able to possibly fire up the Celine 89-421 car for the first time here. And man, this thing has come a long way in the past week. That's right, I said week. Most of the stuff that you have seen done once I got those headers test fitted, everything else was just a lot of hours, a lot of consistency, trying to stay focused and get this thing knocked out. Now, a couple of reasons for that. The owner is motivated to get the car done and ready for car show season, which I completely understand. And number two, well, he's incentivizing me a little bit and probably just trying to test my skills and abilities, I feel. So, you know what? Challenge accepted. So in this video, we're gonna go through the last few minor wiring details in terms of the Terminator X system. Hopefully we'll get power to it. And if everything looks good, we will be priming up that oil pump and hitting that key and see if this thing is gonna fire up. So stay tuned. All right guys, so in the last video, we went through a lot of the tedious things like the exhaust, accessories and wiring and all of those lovely things that, well, you need to do. Cooling system, so, Fluids are in the car. We've got coolant in the radiator. We've got power steering. Well, I should say ATF in the power steering pump. That's pretty debatable these days. Guys, if you don't believe me, check your owner's manual. You can run ATF, or in a lot of cases, you can run power steering fluid. I've just, I've always run ATF because, well, ATF is ATF. It's kind of the universal fluid and can be used in a lot of other instances too. Let's just say if you got a gummed up motor or you got some other things, it's sort of like a secret sauce. So that's in there. The oil's in the motor. We got fuel in the tank and got all that put in yesterday. No leaks. I had it up in the air. Everything is good. Now I haven't put any voltage to the fuel pump yet. So I do need to double check all of the fittings, make sure that number one, fuel is pumping. Number two, that we don't have any leaks because that's the last thing we need. I plumbed up the last of the vacuum lines and I just finished messing around with the map sensor, which I'll show you guys a little bit of footage there because it's a different style sensor than what came with the kit. So I had to repin that and get that done. Second off, I swapped out the idle air control for the factory style one. Now I had the four wire style bolted on just to make sure that it's gonna fit. We'll talk more about this once we get past the startup process and we know everything is running and doing what it should. But ultimately this guy should help with idle and just better overall runability. It's not necessarily a drivability issue, it's more of an idle, idle ability issue. So there's that, I've already gone through, the injector harness is the injector harness guys, it's super easy. And I'm left with just a few wires because ultimately you plug in your injectors, you plug in your coolant temp sensor here. You plug in your manifold air pressure sensor, which in this case, it's over here. Sometimes it's run over there. Just kind of depends what you're going for. Got the oil pressure sending units plugged in. I don't have my fuel pressure uh, sending unit from Holly yet. That should be arriving any day. And I'll be able to get that sensor on here. And then this will be able to run off that. And again, we don't need that to start the car. It's just kind of cool because if you know what the sensor is saying. You can actually read it on the Holly screen. We have our TFI connector right here with a white wire. So we'll talk about the old white wire here in a minute. And so there are videos and videos and videos on the Terminator X setups. And, you know, I'm not going to walk through and beat a dead horse. Just kind of give you guys the basic rundown. Now, all that I'm left with here is this red wire. So this is for the fuel pump relay that comes pre-integrated in the kit. Now, Holly says that if your fuel pump is gonna draw more than 15 amps, that to use their relay to trigger another relay and run you know, a more appropriate gauge wire. So then we just have to hook up our points outputs here and that white wire there, which I believe both of these, and I'm gonna have to double check, are gonna go to the negative side of the coil and we need to put power to the coil 
And that of course is gonna give the coil juice so that we can get spark and we can fire this thing up. So that is pretty much what's left. Um, need to tap into the fuel pump wire underneath the driver's seat so we can get the 12 volts going there off that supplied relay. And that's pretty much it. So I'll show you guys kind of a little bit of the few basics as we go through it and hopefully power up the Holly screen, kind of go through some setup stuff, see if everything's looking good. And if so, maybe bump that key. are super important and this is a new set of battery terminals that you can get from LMR right positive negative and the negative one comes with this extra wire here and there's normally a black connector which is now laying on the ground here and this guy usually plugs into the ground that goes to the main computer harness now this car doesn't have its computer harness anymore because we're on a Terminator X. So what I did is I used this same line and instead of having this connector, you could get the other side of this and plug into it, but I wanted to make sure I had a really, really good connection. So I cut this off. So what I did is I spliced. So this is the wire that says direct to battery, right? So this is now coupled in with this guy going straight to the battery terminal. And it's also going to a body ground. So it is extra grounded, so to speak. It'll be tucked here out of the way, out of harm's way. Everything will be good, look factory-like. And then we have this guy, which again, they say go right to the battery. Now you could go over here to the main distribution block, or you can go to the battery. It's your call, right? So it is, you know, if you're going to this terminal right here, there's not that much more distance to go to right here. And they just say go to battery because they want to iterate, make sure it's clean power and you're not tapping into like the 12 volts that's going to your wiper motor, for instance, right? So you want to make sure you have clean power. Ultimately, it's up to you. I'll probably just run it off the terminal here real quick. I'll see if I have enough when everything is said and done because it was a little bit of a tight fit to um, get it up over there. And ultimately, we'll see where I finish and connect it. You can see I've got a couple strays and these guys will be temporary just for the sake of getting the car started up. And then after that, we can cut and finish. guys so that is pretty much it for wiring up the terminator x setup here and i've got to say pretty straightforward a couple loose wires i'll get into those in a minute and i did double check the aeromotive 340 stealth fuel pump draws a maximum of 15 amps 13.5 volts at 60 psi so we're more than good for the factory or the supplied relay that comes off the terminator x kit and everything is pretty much good to go. I don't have this guy plugged into the distributor yet because, well, this distributor is gonna come out so we can prime the oil pump. There is a white wire that comes off here. That goes to the negative side of the coil, which you can see there. That's why it's kind of loose because, well, I'm gonna do some better routing here. We have 12 volts to the relay for the fuel pump, and that was kind of coming out over there. I can probably find a better way of doing this. So that's why it's just here for now. I've got this brown wire. This is a positive 12 volt switch source ignition forward and during cranking. That's important because you need spark while you're trying to start the car and not all fuses supply 12 volts at the crank position. So we've got that there. I've tapped into the fuel pump relay underneath the seat. You guys saw that. And so one thing that I do wanna show you guys with the map sensor, and you gotta remember, mass airflow, the map sensor, it just, it's open. There's no vacuum line on it of any sorts. But in this case, the computer actually needs to read the reading that's coming off of that sensor. So what we've got there is that is getting teed up 
line is coming in through around here. Of course, this is all gonna get cleaned up. We got our ground. All the grounds are hooked up nice. We saw that earlier. So if we look under here, see this blue vacuum line? And this is the vacuum line going on it, so that blue vacuum line goes into the Terminator X. So we've got that all plugged in and done, and we're good. All right, so, so I had some dinner coming back, looking at everything here, and just kind of want to make sure that everything is looking the way that it should and everything else. And um, vacuum lines are good. PCV is connected in the back. And ultimately, we're going to need probably a catch can style setup in here. But um, got all that plumbed in, got the, all the vacuum lines are good off the map sensor, got that into the vacuum tree and everything else in there, and got the wiring done. Um, 12 volts, the coil is working. I do need to wire a relay in here because, you know, this is 12 volts, but they do say you should have direct 12 volts switch through a relay. So I'll get that sorted out. But with that said, what I want to do is um actually just want to plug this in even though this isn't set um and i want to see if the holly screen turns on and if we can't get into our setup menu i do still need to make sure that we're on top dead center and get all that stuff sorted out so um make sure to do that before we actually fire it up but let's see with the key forward you know what i'm going to grab the instructions as you can see here, I've tapped into the fuse panel as per the instructions. So we've done everything that we need to do as per the Fox body instructions here with its harness kit. And here is our initial power up. So let's see. Oh, would you look at that? We are alive. Perform a TPS auto set before startup. So, don't attempt to start the vehicle until you are told to do so. So we press the pedal to the floor. Awesome. So, all right, let's do uh, this other wizard here. Oh, look at this, 79 to 93 Mustang V8. I think we are a 331. 331. Whew. I don't know what the cam duration is. Let me, uh, let me, let me get on the phone with uh, the engine builder here real quick. That way I can uh, make sure I'm putting in the right stuff. I said it should have been similar to a trick flow stage two. So I just really, the question's gonna be the duration. So it's- Yeah, like the mild street strip or whatever it is the middle setting yeah so it's got below 235 between 235 and 260 or above 260 so for middle oh, mid it's going to be below that <laughs> yeah about to get that thing fired up huh yeah i'm going to uh i just want to go through this because it's been a long day just trying to tie up loose ends and then i'm going to sleep on it um I'll come back, you know, I'll, I'll come tomorrow morning and then, um, yeah, I'll pull the, the distributor out. I'll, I'll prime the, the pump and get juices flowing and stuff. Like I said, I'm gonna leave the blower belt off just so I can actually hear shit um, and make sure that uh, everything's sounding good. It's been pretty straightforward. Um, I got a full three inch. Um, you probably saw it, the black heart exhaust on it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I didn't want to fire the thing up open headers where I can't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, so just run me run me through again. So when I, when I do go to do this, so I don't have to you know disturb you on the weekend. So obviously I'll prime, I'll get the pump primed up. Obviously get my top dead center, slam the distributor back in, and uh, provided the thing fires up, what kind of cycling or. Um, um, so what I do, uh, you know, once you've got it idling, because you know it. Sometimes it takes a little bit when you get when you got that new Holly stuff. Uh, but once you've got that thing idling, um, I let it warm up completely. Burp the cooling system, you know, thermostat cycle, and then uh, shut it off and and let it let it cool. And there's your first oil change. Okay, so like no revving in there, just let, literally let it idle and get up to temp. You can. Okay. You can a little bit just to make sure your throttle response is okay and all that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, obviously no 
6,000 RPM, you know, revs or anything like that. But yeah, absolutely. You want to hear it. 3,500, 4,000, 4, 5,000, you know, that's fine. Okay. So I heard the fuel pump prime, right? And we want to make sure that we don't have any leaks. Definitely got some fuel on the ground here, guys. Well, as the GoPro died, here's our problem. There's the fitting. And there's the line coming off the pump. I didn't tighten anything overly tight. At least I don't think I did. Whatever. I'm just going to own it and say I did it. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's the quality of this pickup. I'm going to have to message Jerry and remember where he got this. But um, yeah, it's a little bit of a burn because without a pickup, can't deliver fuel. Without fuel, can't start the car. Yeah, there you go. It's the realities of uh, working on stuff. Not everything goes 100%. Things break and, you know, I can uh, be down and upset about it or I can grab a beer and end the video and carry on with my night. So there you guys have it. We'll get back, we'll figure it out. Everything is pretty much done.